that could have wheeled a trampoline onto the House floor today, given everyone in the chamber a go, and still elected Republicans would have used their time and energy more productively than they have in their latest adventure. Because now, apparently, the people's business includes keeping pardoned Steve Bannon out of prison. Speaker Mike Johnson saying House Republicans are working to file an amicus brief in Bannon's emergency appeal to the United States Supreme Court. Hard to say which part of that decision is more degrading, the fact that the GOP is sticking its neck out for a Trump ally who ignored a subpoena from their body, having to do with a deadly attack on their own place of work, or that by arguing Bannon should have been allowed to ignore the subpoena, they're effectively endorsing a diminished version of their own congressional authority. Steve Bannon is due to report to prison by July to start a four-month sentence for a crime he did commit. We're back with David Jolly and Charlie Sykes. Um, Charlie, it's it's Mike Johnson is 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 sort of an amazing MAGA underworld underbelly figure. Talk about the series of choices he's making around Steve Bannon. Well, it's it's the same series of choices he's made around what he's willing to do for Donald Trump, what he's willing to say, how he's willing to have the House of Representatives turned into an instrument of the obstruction of, of justice. It, 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 it's it's bizarre, and and I'm sorry to repeat the phrase, it is not normal for congressional leaders faced with serious issues to spend you know this much time trying to keep somebody like Steve Bannon out of, of jail. But it is an indication of what the Congressional Republican Party is and what they feel they need to do uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, to, to throw sops to both Donald Trump and to, and to the MAGA world. And it's an indication of what you would get if, if there was a Trump 2.0 presidency. If anybody thinks that there would be any resistance um, on the part of congressional leaders to the worst abuses of the Trump administration. Look at the way they're behaving right now when he's not even in power, that they're willing to do this sort of thing. You know, and the Supreme Court is, is once again another character in this story. Steve Bannon begged for a pardon in the final hours and days of the Trump presidency for another crime that wasn't really in dispute. He scammed his supporters and Trump's when it came to building a wall, um, he, he, he solicited donations. They didn't go toward the wall or anything remotely resembling the wall. They fattened his pockets. Um, and he's now in trouble again. I mean, the issue of criminal sort of recidivism is another plot point that keeps repeating itself in Trump's innermost circle, David Jolly. Yeah, that's right. And the, we're seeing the law catch up with Steve Bannon. And so you see, you know, Dine fish flop around before they expire. But what he's hoping for, and what all other Trump uh, criminal network people are hoping for, I guess if you could call them that, is that Trump wins and somehow is able to alleviate the, the accountability they're facing. But I think there's a there's a, a behavior that we see in Steve Bannon that Donald Trump himself has normalized, and it is the refusal to even recognize the authority of basic institutions. Steve Bannon would not be in this place of having to report to prison if he had just shown up. He didn't actually have to cooperate with Congress. He just had to respond to the subpoena and show up and then say, you know what, I'm not answering your questions for these following reasons, or I'm pleading the fifth, or exert other privileges. Instead, he just notionally threw out this executive privilege and then said, screw you guys to Congress. And Congress said, well, that doesn't work. That's not the way this works. And so when they made the referral, Department of Justice said there's been zero cooperation. Contrast that, for instance, with the Hunter Biden uh, scenario with the, with the United States Congress. If an adverse witness who really does not want to report at least shows some level of cooperation and some level of making legal claims in their own defense to Congress, the Department of Justice does not want to touch contempt of Congress claims. But with Steve Bannon, he just said, I don't care who you guys are. I don't recognize your authority. I'm not going to cooperate with you. The stupid part for Steve Bannon is all he had to do was show up and shut up, but he didn't do it. And now he's going to jail. Yeah, I mean, it is the hubris. Um, it is the sort of F you um, that has him in this position. L let me turn, though, to the substance of his role on January 6th. Let me show this. This is um, a presentation from Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, Charlie. 
But the evidence indicates that Mr. Bannon had advanced knowledge of Mr. Trump's intent to clear victory falsely on election night, but also that Mr. Bannon knew about Mr. Trump's planning for January 6th. Here's what Bannon said on January 5th. All hell is going to break loose tomorrow. It's all converging, and now we're on, as they say, the point of attack, right? The point of attack tomorrow. I'll tell you this. It's not going to happen like you think it's going to happen, okay? It's going to be quite extraordinarily different. And all I can say is strap in. You have made this happen, and tomorrow it's game day. So strap in. Let's get ready. Let's talk about Steve Bannon. Um, he is a singular figure in both yes. his um, sort of malevolent role he plays in attacking the establishment and his suck uppery to the establishment. He's a prolific source mm -hmm. to mainstream um, media mm -hmm. outlets covering the MAGA movement, very proud of his contributions to it. And this just feels a little bit like the moment catching up with him, Charlie. Well it, well, it is. I mean, he is the id of the MAGA movement at this point. But, but keep in mind that he is doing the bidding of the former president of the United States, the future president of the United States. And, and let's go back to Mike Johnson, that Mike Johnson is looking at him and says, this is our guy. This is somebody that we want to defend. This is somebody who is a victim. So the larger picture here is the assault on any sort of legal accountability for people who were involved with, with January, January 6th. This is part of, of this uh, revisionist history, turning January 6th into some sort of legitimate protest. And Republicans in Congress are now all in on all of this. So, you know, Donald Trump is out on a regular basis, um, joining himself with the January 6th rioters, uh, pledging that he will pardon all of them. And in many ways, you know, Steve Bannon is just a symbol of all of that. What's extraordinary is that Mike Johnson has a choice to make. He could distance himself from that, deal with the business of the country, put the country over this, and move on. Instead, because Donald Trump is demanding it, he has to go and use his authority to try to defend Steve Bannon, who is obviously in deeply involved in the conspiracy to try to overturn this election. But again, this is all part of this continuum, this attack on the criminal justice system, this 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 insistence that uh, that they are all victims. And the fact that the Republican Party, the party of law and order, and I can't get over this. I'm sure David can't either. The party of law and order, you go now to a Trump rally and people are going, I'm voting for the convicted felon. The chairman of the Republican Party in the county that I'm sitting in right now had an op-ed piece. I am voting for the convicted felon. And the more felons they are, the more zealous I'm going to be in supporting them. I mean, this is, we are in a really weird moment in American politics. And it's not just, and when we talk about democracy, but there's a real assault on the concept of the rule of law if you delegitimize the entire criminal justice system and yeah. you turn criminal behavior like Steve Bannon's into some sort of a martyrdom. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.